Shed engineering, but not as you know it. Model engineering without a lathe or milling machine, etc. Hello there, Alan Plum here with some more from Shed Engineering. Okay, this is perhaps not engineering in the truest sense of the word, and in no way am I trying to have a go at any of the true engineers and craftsmen out there. In fact, it's the true engineers out there that are making what I consider are virtually works of art that have inspired me to have a go. But we don't all have big workshops and bulging wallets to buy lathes and milling machines etc. So this is just an alternative approach to show what can be done in an average shed with average tools by an average bloke on an average budget. You've just seen the flywheel there. This is how it actually started. Now I've actually got the luxury of a large bandsaw that came from when I was doing some wood carving many years ago but that can uh, be achieved with uh, normal hand tools. You can also see that I've uh, drilled out at each corner of where the spokes are going to be and so that should give me a nice uh, radius. I then used a jigsaw to cut between the uh, holes and that left me with it uh, roughly cut out. Then I had to drill out for the crankshaft. Well, I realised that uh, I couldn't reach the centre and so I made the size of the uh, flywheel so that I could uh, place the flywheel over the stand, put the motor back on and by doing that I was able to reach the center so each time I had to uh, fasten the grub screws back up and then try and make sure that uh, everything was absolutely square because obviously it was paramount to try and get the wheel as true as possible I then mounted the uh, crankshaft and mounted it into uh, uh, a frame and put a handle on it so that I could uh, use a chisel and true it up. So uh, it was a bit awkward because I was I'm right handed and uh, so I was having to use the chisel with my left hand then I mounted it uh, in this fashion horizontally with like a toolbar uh, on the uh, crankshaft so that I could put some detail into the rim. As you can see I've uh, carved down the spokes. I made a template so that I could gradually carve those down and get them almost exact. But that gives you an idea of uh, how the flywheel was made. I shall go into more detail in a later video and put that in as uh, complete. So here we're back to the uh, beam engine as it is. It doesn't look uh, very much at the moment. You've got to try and imagine the columns being clad and the cylinder clad in mahogany with brass banding etc and uh, a, perhaps a flagstone floor with checker plate uh, access panels down to the condenser etc. And 
and so with the valve tube as I've presently got it uh, the valve stem is a threaded rod going right down through the valve tube with the two valves uh, lock nut onto it and so it's a relatively simple job to pull them out and uh, adjust them slightly. In part one I was uh, running out of time to uh, fit it all into the 15 minutes so I think we'll uh, move forward now to try and show in full um, just how slowly she will actually run. Just about stalling on top dead centre. Perhaps I could open the valve a little bit earlier. She seems to go through bottom dead centre very nicely. She just struggles on top dead centre. That's about as slow as I dare take her without a stalling. But watch out for the following videos where I will explain in more detail how I've uh, got this far. They're mainly photographs, but uh, you might find it interesting. I'll just turn her down a bit more. I think that's wonderful to see her going that, that slow. I'm actually quite chuffed. It's perhaps not engineering in the purest uh, sense of the word. But with the tools and equipment that I've actually got, then I hope you think I'm doing all right. I'm hoping that she could be the slowest running model steam engine on YouTube. Or at least she might take a little bit of beating. Oh, look at that, she's really struggling. Go on, girl, go on. Go on, go on, yes. I wish I'd got a, a stopwatch. 
Although once I get it posted on YouTube, I'll be able to use the timer on the bottom. I don't know how she's keeping going to be honest. Oh I think that valve must be opening a little bit late. I'm sure Mr. Pete or uh, Keith uh, Appleton, I'm sure you'd be able to diagnose uh, what I've got wrong. I'll end up fiddling around with it for hours and hours and hours and you probably tell exactly what uh, what's causing that. I'm wondering whether I've got a bit of a leak on the uh, on the inlet where I've got the copper pipe going into the um, into the oh flipping it into the cylinder. I tried sealing it with a bit of a bit of uh, sealer but she might be leaking there she's got to stall it Neck. I've got to be very careful about lubricating anything because any lubrication on the uh, pivots will ultimately soak into the MDF that I've used. And so there's no lubrication on uh, any of the pivots, only just on the metal linkage down here. Oh! Was that a stall or did she keep going? I don't know whether she's keeping going or whether that's actually a stall. Oh, go on, girl! Oh, bless! Oh no, she's gone again! <coughs> you count that as running or not running? You can't count the RPM if it actually stops can you really oh she's not going to go she's stalled bless so there we go thank you very much for watching I think we'll have to settle for 9 rpm I wonder if that's the slowest running model on YouTube. Hope you've enjoyed it and thank you for watching.